Hello, welcome to the Biostock Studio here at Medicon Village in Lund. We're here today to meet the two newest additions to Alligator Biosciences Management Team, Chief Scientific Officer Peter Elmark and Chief Medical Officer Christina Reimar. The appointments come as the Lund-based biotech strives to further consolidate its strong position in tumor-directed immunotherapy. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Peter, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, uh, could you tell us briefly about your background and how it's a perfect fit for alligator bioscience? Well, I have a background in uh, immunotechnology and immune oncology, and I've worked with um, immune modulatory antibodies for more than 20 years, and, and this fits right into what we are doing here at Alligator um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Well, you were, uh, you've been at the company a long time, but you were recently appointed as uh, Chief Scientific Officer. But uh, you were um, um, at the company as a VP Discovery uh, since 2018. W could you tell us a little bit about the difference between those two positions? Sure. So the, the CISO role is, is broader. So, it, it, uh, so I'm responsible for the science and the scientific strategy from discovery to preclinical and clinical development. So a broader and more strategic role. And I think it's an important role for Alligator. Uh, so my aim is to ensure that we have the, the scientific quality needed in the programs to, to meet up with our, our business model. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Alligator is, uh, of course, active in a very highly competitive environment. And uh, what would you say is Alligator's most significant advantage over uh, versus the competitors? Sure. So one of the key advantages is that we very early on focused on tumor-directed immunotherapies, so immunotherapies that are selectively active in the tumor microenvironment. And this is really meets one of the key needs in the field right now uh, because this allows us to develop next generation uh, immunotherapies that are, that are more, more both efficacious but also tolerable enough to allow for combination therapies. So combining our drugs with the first generation uh, immunotherapies such as PD-1 therapies but also with chemo uh, and other modalities. Mm. And s secondly, we have um, we have a technology platform that we have built over many years that really meets the needs for how to make these new um, immunotherapies. And I think it's really important to have this in-house to, to be able to be creative and, and generate these new, uh, the new drugs. Uh, finally, I would say we have been in the field for, for a long time and uh, this has resulted in a, in a great know-how uh, that we've built over the years in, in Alligator, but also a network of uh, collaborators and scientific experts in the field that we, that we use as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, speaking of uh, innovative strength, uh, Alligator has recently launched a new uh, platform, the NeoX Prime, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell us what it is and uh, why, why is it important? Sure. So NeoX Prime is a, it's a new concept. It's really a third generation uh, immunotherapy uh, and it's uh, based on bispecific antibodies uh, designed to really to trick the tumor to reveal itself to the immune system. So it, it, um, it acts by binding to uh, CD40. It's a receptor on dendritic cells and also so it's bispecific binding to CD40 on dendritic cells and to with the other arm to tumor particles. So it creates this new interaction. And this interaction then leads to a process called cross-presentation. And this, in the end, results in, in more uh, tumor-specific T cells being generated. And this comes back to why it's important, because you know, PD-1 therapies have had great success today. Uh, but it only still cures maybe one fifth or, or cures um, have, a, have a real benefit for more than one fifth of the patients. And one of the things that is in common with these patients that don't respond is that they lack T cells to the tumor. So NeoX Prime really addressed one of the key needs within the field of human oncology, generating more tumor specific T cells. Mm -hmm. And I think this could really uh, benefit the patients and also lead to more patients responding to immunotherapy. 
so this is why it's important. All right. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, Christina, um, <coughs> while Peter has been an alligator for some time, you are a very new addition to the team. And uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm a, a medical, medical doctor with a, with a specialist degree in gastroenterology and hepatology. And uh, most of my career, actually for more than 15 years, I've worked as a clinician. So in, in different Copenhagen hospitals, I'm Danish and still based in Denmark. And um, throughout my clinical career, I've always done clinical research. I have a PhD that builds on studies, clinical studies with patients with upper GI symptoms and diseases. And then uh, four years ago, I decided to make quite a shift in careers and commit my time to doing research and development. And uh, I joined Faring Pharmaceuticals, a mid-sized pharmaceutical company, as a global medical director where I did global late stage development. So proof of concept to phase three development of peptides, microbiome based therapies and GI and liver indications. Mm -hmm. So a good fit for alligator bioscience, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what attracted you to alligator bioscience? And um, um, what will you bring to the company as chief medical officer? So, so I think there were a lot of different um, aspects of the position that made it very uh, attractive for me. Um, one of them being all the action in Alligator. So I, I think when you look at the number of projects that Alligator has in clinical development, that number is quite impressive when you take the size of the company into account. And, um, and that tells you that, that Alligator is a very agile company where you make decisions and execute on them in a very effective manner. And, and that is something that is very attractive for me coming from a company where there is more decision layers. Mm. Um, and another thing that, that uh, was very attractive to me was that it was obvious that Alligator has a very uh, rigorous scientific approach and data-driven approach to their discovery, uh, their preclinical work. And, and I truly believe that that's the best starting point for it all clinical development that you have a solid foundation to build on. So that was also very attractive for me. What will I bring? I hope to be able to bring the expertise I have from proof of concept to phase three development. Um, it's clear that Alligator is, is entering a new era. So previously they were a phase one company. Um, and now we are taking projects to proof of concept which is uh, slightly different and takes some additional skills in terms of understanding the big picture of clinical development to be able to see uh, the path to market for a product already at the point in time when you enter a proof of concept. Uh, so I hope to be able to bring that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you, your, your main focus will be on the clinical programs, as you mentioned, uh, mainly a ADER 1017 and uh, Mithazolimab. Uh, can you give us an update on the status and the plans for, for both these projects? Sure. Happy to do that. So for, for Mithazolimab, we are initiating our phase two study, Optimize. Um, it's a multi-center, uh, open-label European study where we combine metasalimab with chemotherapy in patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer. And we are in the very last phase of preparing for initiating that trial, uh, and the planning is, is progressing. And I expect we will be able to include the first patient in that study in two to three months. Mm -hmm. um, the overall aim of this study is, so one aim is to continue assessing the safety of metasalimab now in combination with chemotherapy, which is the first time we test that combination in patients. But the other very important aim is that this is the first chance we get to see if metasalimab has an effect and can impact patients' uh, objective response rate and survival, um, patients that belong to our target, pop uh, target population. So I'm, I'm very excited about that because patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer have a terrible prognosis with the available treatments today. So, so this is really the first time we can test if we can make an impact in that population with metasalimab. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, Mita Zalimab, uh, and uh, this is the final question, the company will be presenting new preclinical data around Mita Zalimab at the AACR uh, conference in April. Will this data contribute at all to the clinical planning uh, for the project? Yeah, um, the data that will be presented is preclinical data from uh, a tumor model showing that metasalimab enhances the uh, efficacy of chemotherapy, particularly uh, fulfirinox, mm. which is the chemotherapy we combine with and optimize. So if anything, it just supports our hypothesis for that study and, and supports that the combination of metasalimab and fulfirinox has a potential to be uh, effective and reduce the tumor burden in patients. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly look forward to seeing what those uh, data show. And uh, yeah, that, uh, that concludes the, the session. Thank you both for being here and uh, we wish you all the best for the continued uh, progress with these projects. Thank you. Thank you.